What is up guys? Welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a bigger look at the modeling tab. I know we went a little bit into it with the QGrid tool in the last episode, but in this episode I'm going to show you guys a little bit more about the modeling tab and how you can use some of these tools to create some of your own assets within Unreal Engine. So I was going to put out a more advanced cube grid tutorial, but I ran into a lot of issues with Quixel Bridge, so it's just slowed me down a lot, so I'm sorry about that, guys. I might actually throw that into my advanced tutorial list when I start doing those. I will show you guys how to texture those cube grids in the next tutorial, so we will do a simple version of how to do that. So don't worry about that, guys. It will be in the next tutorial, and I'm going to try to get that out this week. So let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make a new level. If you don't know how to do that, check out my previous tutorials. It shows you all about how to create your own level and go through all the basics. So we're just going to create a basic open world here because we're just going to use it to work in. Now, you don't have to do this. This is just for the purposes of this video so we can see our models clearly. We can always import our models to different levels later. All right, so we're going to go ahead and save our level as models. What I want to do is go back up to the selection tab and we're going to go to modeling mode. You can hit shift F5, whichever you like. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you guys how to sculpt a little bit inside of Unreal Engine. Now, a lot of people use ZBrush, Blender, Maya, uh, 3ds Max, a lot of other things to sculpt their models. But Unreal Engine actually allows you to sculpt models within Unreal Engine. Now, why would you want to do this, may I ask? Well, of course, it's a huge time saver. If you're just trying to put rocks out or small buildings or things that can be made pretty fast, or maybe you want to just place out your map so you can get it set up and you know where everything's going to be. So what I want you to do is we're going to go to the sphere here and we're just going to create a new sphere. And it doesn't matter what how big it is, but I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger just so you guys can see it. So we're going to go ahead and try to sculpt this into a rock. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to hit accept on this sphere here. Make sure the sphere is selected. We're going to go down to deform here. What I want you to click on is B sculpt. In B sculpt, we'll be able to sculpt pretty much like you would be using a draw brush in Blender. And of course, there's other brushes to be able to use and you can adjust your brush accordingly. So when you see I draw on it, it automatically draws. What's cool about Unreal Engine is it already has symmetry enabled. So if you're trying to make a symmetrical object, it's already going to be symmetrized. If you want to disable symmetry, you just want to come down to symmetry in your settings and disable this checkbox. So now when you draw on it, you can pretty much draw on it wherever you want. And that's what we're going to do because we don't want this rock to be perfect so we can pull off a more realistic look. So what we're going to do is go to this B sculpt and we're going to turn the size up quite a bit. We're just going to draw on it just like this. And now it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just an example. But you see, I kind of have like a more rock shape coming out. You just want to try to get it where it's not a perfect sphere anymore. Okay, I just want you to hit accept. We're not going to get too much into this tool right now. Of course, I'll save that for the more advanced tutorials. But I will show you guys a couple of more things. So while you're in V Sculpt, you're going to have all these settings. This is how you would adjust your brush size. So you see it's pretty big there. If I turn it down, it'll get smaller. We could turn the flow down and make it just kind of work a little bit slower. And there's some other things that you could do here to affect this. Now, if you want to change your brush, you could just go to the sculpting in right here and change this brush to anything you want. And there's lots of different sculpting tools, just like you would see in Blender. So we got a move tool, inflate, pinch, grab, scale, lots of the big tools that we'll need to be able to sculpt pretty much any object. So this is actually really cool guys that this has all these tools inside of this engine. So let's go ahead and select move and now you'll see if I push it it's just going to move it over just a little bit. It's not going to do a whole lot with it. So you can just kind of play around with that and see what you can come up with. I'm going to go to the smooth brush here. There's also lots of other settings you can mess with to get your brush to look a little bit different. You can also see the wireframe of your object by just clicking this button. It's also pretty cool because you can change the material mode for rendering. So if you wanted to change it into something different, maybe a custom image, you want to make it more soft, subtle, you could do that. Again, we'll talk about that later in another tutorial. So that is our wireframe 
for our object. Okay, for this first rock, I just want you to hit accept. Make sure your rock is selected. And we're gonna go, and as you can see, the rock is really smooth to be a rock. So what we're gonna do is try to make this a little bit less smooth here. So what I wanna do is go back to my deform tab and go to displace. Now you see I already have a more rocky looking texture on the outside of it. This isn't actually a texture, it's just the actual object. So that's even better. So now we just want to adjust the intensity over here in the settings for the displacement. I'm gonna set it to something a little lower, maybe something like one, let's see, two. I think maybe four would look pretty good. So I'm gonna set it to four and that looks okay. So this is your displacement tab and you could always change things. Like if you want it to be random noise, if you want it to be constant noise, sine wave noise, all sorts of different displacement types that you can go with. If you wanted to make rocky mountains or hills faster, maybe you want to turn the sine wave on. I don't know, you can make a flower out of that. I really don't know what you'd make with that, but something. We're just going to set it back to Perlin noise, and then we're going to take the displacement density and set it to something like three. And now our object looks more like a rock. I might actually take this down to two, and you could always change the random seed if you want to make these little bumps and things change spots. So if you want to make it random on where the spots are popping out, you just hit this random seed. You can also adjust it by weight map, but we're not going to go in that today. Once you're done displacing and getting your rock looking how you want it to look, we're just going to hit accept. And then we're going to go ahead and save just in case something happens. We're going to go up into Quixel Bridge. Now, if your Quixel Bridge is running slow, it was for me for 5.1. I actually had to reinstall Bridge and set it up again, and that fixed it for me. But if it's not working for you guys and you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you get that working faster. Okay, you just wanna make sure you're signed in to Quixel Bridge and we're gonna just search for rock. And what we wanna do is we wanna to go to surfaces. We're just gonna go down here till we find rock and then you'll see all sorts of different kinds of rocks. Let's see, I think today we're gonna go with this mossy rock right here. I think that would be pretty good for this kind of style rock here. So I'm gonna do that in highest quality. So we're just gonna download that and click add. Then we're just gonna drag it onto our rock and boom, there you go. We have a pretty nice looking rock already. Let's change the lighting so we can see it a little bit better. And I'd say it's looking pretty good. All right, so now you know how to add materials to an object and you also know how to use the B Sculpt tab. We have our first rock. Now, if you want to adjust this material even further, we're just going to select the rock, go into our details, and go down to materials. We're gonna click on our material here. It looks pretty good, but we're just gonna see what we can do with it. Maybe we can tweak it and make it look a little bit better. So once you have these details, you're gonna look for tiling. Tiling probably won't be activated, uh -huh. but you'll need to activate that. So if we go to tiling X and Y, we're gonna set this to something like three. And now you'll see it's kind of spread the texture out a little bit across this object. So now it's looking a little bit better. I think it looks pretty good. Again, this is just a beginner tutorial, so I'm not gonna to go too into detail, but this is a pretty good looking rock overall for something really fast and simple. So, so guys, if you see if I re reset this X and Y, what's huh? gonna happen? is you actually don't see the texture at all because you have to pull it on to the object. And now you see that just because I'm pulling the tiling X means that I'm not actually spreading the texture across the object evenly just on the X axis. So we need to do it on both the X and the Y axis. So if I pull the Y axis, you'll see the texture starting to look more like it should. What I like to do is kind of get a good idea of where I'm at and you'll see your numbers 0.5 and 0.8 so I'll just find something kind of similar to those numbers. So we'll do 0 0.6, we'll do 0 0.6. And there we go, we have a pretty nice looking rock. The moss and the shadows and some of the details are actually going really well with this displacement. It almost looks like a real rock to me, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think this looks like a real rock. All right, so we're gonna do the same exact thing, but we're gonna do this with a different rock. So you can just save that if you want. Now, what I would suggest doing when you're making these new materials, if you're using material for a specific object and you don't really want to use that material for anything else, but you want to use the same material for multiple objects, you just want to have them different sizes, then I would suggest taking that material, finding it in your browser, and then making a copy or duplicate of it 
and then editing this copy. That way, you'll be able to use this copy for all the different rocks that are the same size or whatever. Because if you have this material, it won't fit on everything. You actually are going to want to UV map this for each specific object. So this just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so now what I want you to do is just go back up to Sphere again, and we're going to try to make another rock, but with a different tool. So just put your sphere down and hit accept, click on your sphere, and this time we're going to go to Desculpt. Now you may get an error, but that's okay. So this Desculpt tab has a little bit of a more tricky thing to it. So what we want to do is it has this message up here on top. So this mesh has UV seams, which may limit remeshing. So what we're going to do is actually click discard attributes and that will just get rid of that message and let us sculpt on this. So we have the move brush enabled right here. So when we're in sculpting, we have our size of our brush, our fall off, our depth, and with our brush type, we have all sorts of different brush types. It's pretty much like the other one, but I think this one is better for detail. If you're trying to create detail, this is probably the way you want to go. So if we go to our brush type, we have move selected. So you'll see when I click my brush, I can move these vertices pretty much however I want. It's a lot clearer and smoother than if I was to use the V-Sculpt tool. So let's go ahead and try to make a rock shape with this. And like I said, it can be pretty much anything you want it to be. I'm going to use the inflate tool and just inflate. So here's a pretty easy tip that you might want to know. So when you're sculpting and you just hit the mouse down, you'll see that it adds to our mesh. If I hold control, it will actually take away from the mesh. And this actually works for most of the sculpting tools. You could also adjust the strength here to make your brush a lot stronger and create things faster. So I think this is a pretty decent shape for a rock here. It's not perfect, but we'll work with it. So we're going to hit accept. We're going to click on our rock. We're going to go back to our displace again. And we're going to set our displacement density to something like four. And we're going to turn our random seed up some. And there we go. We'll just hit accept. And now I just want to add the same material. So if you wanted to just scroll through your materials and see what materials you have to use, you would just click this tab here under the details for that sphere. And you can add whatever texture you want. In this case, we want to add mossy rock. So I would just type in mossy and we can put that on there. So we want to add the same texture from this rock onto this rock. Now, if you can't find this texture in your content drawer and your stuff is just too unorganized, you just want to click this little folder here under your material. When you click it, it'll bring you to the material that was chosen. So just drag it onto your object. Go to the elements here, and we're going to look for moss. And that will be our mossy rock that we had before. And there you go. So now we have two rocks and if you wanted to you could put them together and form one rock formation and of course you could scale these up however big you want and boom we have some rocks pretty cool we're going to go ahead and save this keep in mind that you can actually use those sculpting tools after using the cube grid tool to edit the cube grid so if you want to make your cube grid look cool and detailed and have some weird features you can always sculpt it or desculpt it all right, so now I want to make sort of like a rock wall. How could I do that? So what I want to do is maybe take a box. And we'll make this box bigger. Let's do it 500 by 500 and click accept. Okay, so I'm just going to scale it down a little bit so it's a little bit more like a wall. And if you want to, you can disable snapping here and make it even thinner. And we're going to go down into desculpt. We're going to go back down to the bottom where disc and click discard attributes. Now I want to adjust my brush size to be a lot bigger. And now you see when I sculpt on this door, it automatically adds mesh. So I'm just clicking little dots to cover this whole area. So now we have something like this. Now we're going to just go to the smooth tool. I'm gonna to set it to one. So now what we want to do is just remesh this. That way we can fix the polygons just a little bit. We're going to hit accept and just adjust the smoothing here with the smoothing rate and triangle count. I'm going to leave it like that and press accept. So now I'm going to go back up to Quixel Bridge and try to find something that looks good for this wall. What I want you to do is just search for decorative stone and wall. You should get all these different stone wall type textures. So I like this stone pebbly type texture here or material. So we're going to use it. So I'm just going to take it and just drag it onto the object. And now it's going to download it for me. So just give it a second. 
Okay, so you see we have slapped our material on the object and it does not look very good. So we're going to try to fix that. So what I want you to do is click on the object and we're going to go all the way down to the bottom here. Then we're going to go to project. Now we have project here and we can easily change our UV tiling. So what I want to do is actually instead of projection type, we're going to set it to box. So now you see we're getting a little bit closer to how it's supposed to look. So now I'm just going to adjust the scale here until I get these rocks about the size that I want them to be on the wall. And as you can see, it's looking a little better. And of course, it's not perfect, but it's a good start. You can also adjust the dimensions here if you want to adjust all sides. Okay, so I think that looks all right like that. It's not perfect, like I said, but it's a good start. So we'll just hit accept, and there you go. We have a nice rock wall here. And now when you see you press play, you can actually run into these objects. They already have collision installed to them. But there you go, guys. So that is my beginner tutorial for the sculpting tools inside of Unreal Engine. If you guys like this tutorial or have any questions about it, please leave them in the comments as I would be happy to help you guys. If there's anything that you're trying to learn immediately to get your process going faster, let me know what that is in the comments as well, as I'll try to make videos on those particular subjects. This is how you use the sculpting tools in Unreal Engine, how to make a rock and a rock wall really fast if you're just trying to put stuff on your map quick. I'll show you guys a more advanced tutorial on this later. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys on the next one.